Okay, let's um make a confession of our worker face through Matthew chapter sixteen sixteen. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God. So let's bless each other who sit next to us. God already told you the mystery of your birth already. Is it very weird when I talk about the mystery of the birth, right? So maybe remnants, you will just doubt yourself that uh, does he really my father or not? Do I really am a child of my father or not? Actually, the mystery of the birth is very important, actually. Because birth is beginning. So today, the title of the message is Three Timeline of the Life. So God gave us the three opportunities for us. What is that? The birth. So everyone just think that this is very easy. So we just live in this world. So it's very easy. But actually, this is the miracles, actually. Actually, from the God's perspective, actually, God gave us the opportunity. You must believe in that. And today, actually, we are not talking about the only birth, but everyone is already get married. And then our future generation, they will marry soon. Actually, you know, uh, marriage is very important as the birth. How marriage is important because this is the beginning of the second life. Even this is also the opportunity that God has given to us. But to tell you accurately, I think there are only few people that who realized, oh, this is the opportunity that which is given from God. And then they haven't realized yet, actually. And in reality, actually, before they marry, they really love each other. But if someone asks you that, will you gonna like marry those person like one more time or not? If you have more one more opportunity, I don't really like see that many people just were gonna say no because they do not know the opportunity that which is given from God. So death. Actually, we will die. In the in the Bible, how are we gonna say? In Hebrew chapter 9, verses 27, we will die. And then after that, you know, after that, there is a judgment. But from the God's perspective, actually, death is the, you know, great opportunity that God wants to give us. Um, there is a, some persons, I mean, there are many people so, who got the cancer and they are suffering. And, but if, if you have a cancer, but if you have a long life, do you think that is it good? And if someone told you that you must to live eternally with this status, like with this state, then will you going to be happy? And actually, death is a great opportunity that God gave to us. So birth and marriage and death, you have to know. But if you want to know accurately, actually the order has to be changed. Everyone thinks that the birth is the beginning, but actually you have to know what the death is first. Then after that, you are able to understand what the marriage is. And then after that, you will understand what the birth is. And if you know this one correctly, you can really start your life correctly. You know, everyone just think that, you know, above one, the birth, marriage, death. But we have to change. I mean, the conversely, you have to understand the death first and then marriage and then birth. And you start from there. Actually, that is the real life.
actually this could be the great evidence that appeared and revealed in our daily life and we are able to see. So last week I already told you that I already went to the Chiang, Chiang Lai in the northern part of Thailand and then it is long time no see and then I saw many ministers in there and then when I met them when I sat over there the Deccan end she was over there and then she told me then when will you go back to Bangkok I just arrived then she asked me when will you go back to Bangkok it means that you have to go back quickly no right when will you go back to Bangkok what does it mean it means that you will go anyway you will go to Bangkok anyway I already knew that you already you will back to the Bangkok but I just want to know so when you go some some place depends on what is their first questions we can know the relationship between you and that person's if someone is close to you what is the first questions that they ask frequently when will you back if you're not close actually you don't need actually you don't need to ask maybe you just think maybe one day like we'll go back or we'll go yeah when will you go back to bangkok or when will you come back actually it means that you're so close to that person and you just like very like feel happy that oh that person's come to my place and then you're very like feel sad when they go back to their places actually in here in this world actually this world is not a just eternal place that we will stay this is kind of the just one of the station one of the place that we were going to stay temporarily so there is a some place that where we comes from and then one day when time reach like we have to go to that place but many people do not know this mystery and do not know the secrets like for a long time like they do not really understand the death first and then this world is keep teaching about the birth like you know frequently rather than death and everything starts you know everyone always keep talking about birth and it becomes our nature i mean it becomes our great like one of the traditions or costumes or some system in this world actually that is very important but they do not really talk about this death and many people they are just avoid to listen about these terms and number two, there is a, some original things. So what is the original things? With God. God is with us. So what is the real beginning and what is the real starts? Actually, originals. Original man, actually. But if, many people do not know this mystery of the originals. Like where we come from, actually. We have to really know about this. It doesn't mean that we come from ourselves or we come from our parents. Actually, we comes from God. But we lose hold on to this. So what happened to us? Like mankind, they start to separate from God. The first man, they separate from God. However, through the grace of God, we return back to God. While we separate from God, actually we worship the idols, like a lot of idols, which is not God. And we do not know what is the original man. And then we just wondering and then we just looking for other things. So still like many people, it doesn't mean that they change something or they change the religion. It doesn't mean that like many people say that, oh, we changed the religion before we worship the idols and then we return back to like God. Many people speak in this way, like, oh, actually, you know, before I was Buddhism and then later on, I become a Christian, I mean, I become a Christian, so actually, that is wrong, actually. Being a Christian, actually, this is like, you just return back to the original states, like, actually, you sh deserve to be a Christian since the beginning, and you have, you just return back. So many people just keep saying that, oh, our master has been changed. Yes, that is correct. But actually, since the beginning, your master was God. So actually, we can set a new beginning. Then after that, 
Then after that, you start to understand. Uh, he's the first and he's the last. And in Gen uh, Revelation chapter 22, verses 13, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the first and I am the last. I am the beginning, I am the end. So he's same yesterday and today and forever. So when you really understand those things, uh, you we will understand that oh, we are the eternal being. We can understand we are the eternal being. So dear, while we are living in this world, yeah, we have just we have only once. I mean, our life is only once, right? So when we really like divide our life into three timeline, let's divide like we can divide our life into three timeline. The first one, what is that? Actually, we are we were in the mother's womb for ten months. For ten months, during a ten month, actually, during that period, actually, that is me. Actually, we got a lot of influence from while we we're in mother's womb. Actually, actually, everyone just think that oh, this baby do not know anything. It seems like they don't they know nothing. And they cannot do anything. But actually, during these 10 months, it's very important periods. And then many things were going to, like, um, like, nurtured. And everything is kind of, like, getting more, like, nurtured during that time. And then very important things will be, like, imprinted during those times, during those periods. And then that time... 10 months while you're in mother's womb, actually, this is you. And then this is really hidden your hidden in your deep so, deep inside. Everyone just think that Jui is just like after she grow up and then, but actually Jui is while she was in the mother's womb for 10 months, actually, she already got formed already. Like everything was formed already. This is the mystery of the birth. It's very important. So if you really want to know yourself correctly, you have to return to those times again. But how can we are able to return to those times? It means that we have to really understand those period, 10 months during while you're in mother's womb actually for 10 months. How can we are able to know this 10 months? Our life comes from God, and we have to live with God, and we have to return to God. When you really know what is the beginning, what is the end, actually it's end already. So if you really understand yourself, and if you really understand other people, actually, just do not really see their outer appearance, but let's see while we while they are in the mother's womb and we can see their family background we can see their family tree like and we can see their beginning and this is what bible said genesis if you do not know what the genesis is actually you do not know what the life is life of the mankind if you want a true life Actually, everything is written in the Genesis. That is the Genesis in the Bible. So you have to really understand the message in the Genesis. Then actually you can know true life and you can know yourself. Like during a 10 month, we're living in, in the mother's womb. Actually, after that, right now, number two, the life in the world. Like, number one, we can divide into three timelines. The first one, life in the mother's womb. And number two, life in the world. We can also divide into many ways, like childhood or young adults and then senior. And Joel. And Joel versus two. Like 
I mean, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 says that your sons and daughters will prophesy. Like it means when you're young, you must have a vision for your dreams. I mean, for your future. And then your old man will dream dreams. Like when you're young, like you will you will have the visions, right? And after that, you see those, the vision of the dreams. And then your young man will see, you know, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old man will dream dreams. And your young man will see visions. Yeah, actually, this is what our timeline of the our life we must hold on to the life that which just comes from god and then we have to already we have to see the visions of the future and then these visions will be fulfilled in your lifetime i mean you must have experience of that and when you become a senior our younger generations they we have to help them to see the vision. We have to let them to have a dream, dreams. Like we have to like, you know, support them to see like those visions and those dreams. And then number three, we have the eternal life, like life in the mother's womb, life in this world and life that we live eternally. So actually this eternal life actually this is inside of the God's power and a God's time schedule. So there is a heavens and there is a hell as well. So humans, God create the humans like in God's image. What does it mean? God is last. God is eternal. So that's why God create us as the eternal being. Those people that who restore the God's image, you are able to stay with God in the heaven like forever. And those people that who separate from God, you will gonna follow the Satan's that who let you separate from God. And then same as you know, Satan is also you know eternal until the second coming of the Jesus Christ. But actually. If you really separate from God, eternally you will go to the hell. So, you have to really understand your timeline of your life. From the birth to the death. Actually, after death, that is also important. How you know this? Actually, this is the life. And this is the timeline of the life. And if you really know your timeline of your life, actually, you are true humans. You're true men. So number one, let's really hold on to this concept, these introductions in your head, and then let's move to the main body, the number one. The, the God calls the fishers. And God called them as a disciples. God called the fishers and then Jesus told him that uh, they are the disciples. And then let's look at the life of the fisher first. Firstly, let's look at the life of the fisher. What is the life of the fishers? Actually, they have to really like, you know, use their labor. I mean, they have to go to the outside and then they have to catch the fish and then they have to sweating. And then they have to really put a lot of efforts. And then what is the life of the fishers? They have to take on the boats and then they have to go into the boats. And then they have to go outside and then they they must have the, some system in their organization. They must have the captains. And all of the people has to cooperate each other on the boats. And then they can able to catch the fish. But what is the characteristic of the fisher, the life of the fisher? Actually, the fish is the alive, right? But they have to catch the fish, which is alive. What does it mean, the catching the fish, which is alive? That it means that you must to kill. I mean, that fish, you know, it, it was alive before, but since we catch the, we since we catch them, actually they dead, right? So actually, this life we can think that are the life of the worldly life. 
And then one day afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples. And then I will let you become a fishers that who can save the people. And Jesus told him that you're not just one of the fishers, but you're just become a fishers that who can save the people. You know, in the beginning, they are just one of the fishers that to catch the fish. But after that, God called them as a disciple that who can become a spiritual fisher that can save the can save the you know people. And then actually, it means that before they really have the life, which is the worldly worldly life or physical life. But and then before they have the standard of like earthly standards or worldly standard, but or physical standards. But right now they start to have the you know heavenly level, like heavenly standard and a spiritual standard. Actually, this life is very special. What kind of like special life that I'm talking about? It means that they are dead before. It's totally different. Before, when you're just one of the just physical fisher, you just catch the fish which is alive. But after you catch, they will die, right? But you know, spiritual fisher. What does it mean? It means that you save the people that who are already spiritually dead already. So, but what is the difference between just physical doctor in here in our church? We have like Motob and many doctor in here. But what is a doctor? Doctor just like you just. Cure the people that who has already already alive. I mean, who has still have a life. But what about the fishers? I mean, spiritual fisher and evangelist. It means that you save the people that who are already spiritually dead, and then you let them to live. You know, this is the method, and this is the reason of God why God called them, and then let them. To be turned into the disciple, just from the fisher to the disciple, actually same as like we are, we are also same as like them because like before we also spiritually dead before. <laughs> so Epic in chapter two verses one, it says that as for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins. Actually, we are already dead in our transgressions and sins, and in our because of the original sins, we actually we are already dead already. Epic in chapter two verses one. And of course, physically we are alive, but actually spiritually that this is what this is our past. But God gave us the eternal life, and it God let let us, you know, have the new life. We are the same people. We are the same people, but now I mean they are just fisher, one of the fishers. But right now they become a disciples. Genesis chapter seventeen, verses five. Genesis chapter seventeen, verses five. God called Abraham. Uh, God called. Okay, so Genesis chapter seventeen, verses five. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your name will be Abraham. Actually, before he was the one that who like you know manufacture like he like you know make the idols before, but you know now he become a. Just the ancestor of the faith. I mean, father of the faith. Actually, before he was Abraham, but now he was become Abraham. Exodus, chapter fourteen, like verses sixteen. Actually, now you know Moses. He was he become a eighties. Now he just grabbed like his staff, and he's the one who was the shepherd and it just you know take care of the sheep and young lamb. And then when God was with him, that staff that what Moses holding, actually this is just this is not a, just one of the just normal staff, but this normal staff turned into the staff to save the Israel people, and that he also do the miracle of the Red Sea through his staff as well. I mean, which is from the God's power. And then what about the Paul? Actually, before in the beginning, actually Paul he was a persecutor. He always persecute the peoples that who believe in God. Before Paul, God appeared Himself. Before poor Paul, before in the beginning, actually he was the persecutor. And then right now, he become an evangelist that many people respect him, and that many people honor him. Same person, right? But they become a difference. I mean, they become a different person. What does it means? 
why Jesus like appeared them before them and then led them to become a disciple from the fisher. What is the meaning of that? Do you think that this is just one of the story of the disciples? No, this is our story as well. Actually, before in the past, actually, we have our own life and then we, do, we just do not know who the God is, actually. And then we just follow the life, just what we want and what we desire. But one day God called us and he called us as a disciples. But what kind of the disciples? Number two, God let us become a shepherd. God let us become a disciple that who is a shepherd. But what is the shepherd? Let's look at the life of the shepherds. Actually, the, when you become a God's shepherd, it means that God's absolute heavenly calling, like heavenly mandates, that is the heavenly mandates from God. The thing that what you're doing, it should be your vocations. Right now, you're doing right something or your occupation, or the, the things that you're doing, you have to always remember that all oh, this work is God has entrusted to me. And you must enjoy your work, and you must to really love your work. And if you really enjoy and love your work, you will be good at your working and in your life. You have to be a disciple, and you have to be a spiritual shepherd. And then God is keep calling you. So that's why God gave us his calling. The first one is heavenly mandates and then the second one is calling. What does it mean? Calling means someone should call us. And it means that we also should receive the calling from someone. So the condition of the calling is someone should call us and we must receive the calling from someone as well. Right? We must receive the calling as well. But you have to really ask for the subject. Who called you? is very important who called you we are powerless we are weak i called joey i'm still weak i'm still like powerless but i called joey but maybe i'm a human so maybe one day i cannot really take a responsibility of the joey but i truly believe that god calls her and until the end god will take a responsibility of a whole life or her aspect of her life then if you receive the calling from god what do you have to do obedience you have to obey so what we can do nothing else just obey joshua he received the calling do you know how at the time like bible explain about at that the situation during that time like he says that moses he is the servant of God and Joshua is the servant of the Moses. It means that what God really desire, you have to obey to the leader, you have to obey to the leader and you have to obey to God. So through the obedience, God lead like Joshua and God led Joshua to become a, another leader as well. So today we can see the question and answer between the people and um, between the per, between the people who received the calling and between the god who is call who called them yeah so jesus today we haven't read this bible verses yet but especially jesus like come to the peter actually at the time there are lots of disciples but he chose the peter and he says that simon son of john do you love me more than this? Like, why did you just, like, ask three times? Just one more, just once is enough, but why he asked three times? Like, do you love me more than this? Why he have to ask, like, do you love me? Like, do you love me? Do you love me? And then, you know, as you know, Peter, he refused, like, he refused the Jesus, like, three times. You know, he denied the Jesus, like, three times, and the Jesus appeared and Jesus said to Simon Peter, that, do you love me? Why? Jesus asked like this. You know, before, like Peter, he has feel, he has the sense of the, you know, guilt. And then he was like, feel very bad. And he was very feel burdens. So God wants to, you know, take a responsibility of his life. And God want, God doesn't want him to 
have the burden and those you know feel of the guilt all the time so that's why jesus asked him then what you can do just answer to him do you love me and he says that you know lord you know all things you know that i love you you know even we always keep saying oh we love god we love god but sometimes we are very weak and then during that time jesus always ask us do you love me jesus is keep asking me actually you don't need to do anything just answer lord you know all things you know that i love you just answer to this answer to these questions okay then if you answer already number three what is that the commissions then what we can take like carry out these commissions how the method of the jesus just joy just joy the joy is mean jesus jesus first like j like j first so what we are able to save other people like you must to just receive the power first you must to be revived first and you can you know save other people so jo joy it mean like jesus first and other people and yourself so when you really like you know when jesus becomes your great priority actually sometimes you can receive some attack or persecution from other people maybe you might think that this is the sufferings do you think that everyone can receive the persecutions no if you die because of the you know gospel if you receive the persecutions because of the gospel actually even though you want to do it even though you you keep saying that i want to receive the persecuted like persecutions or i want to die for gospel actually you cannot do it it should be like chosen by god john chapter 21 verses 18 to 19 let's say john chapter 21 verses 18 to 19 he already, like Jesus already showed that the Peter, he will die for the gospel at the end. Very truly, I tell you, when you're younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and you lead you where you do not want to go. It means that he already showed that Peter, he will die for the gospel, like prophecy. So you have to know that these death will be you know, really would glorify God and it will be written like eternally. Like there are many occupations, but why Jesus like, you know, compare between the shepherd's life? Because what is the mission's commission of the disciples? You have to find the lost sheep. This is your missions, your commissions, like lost sheep. Actually, when you look at the other people, when you observe the other people in this world, they seems very okay. They seems very good, but actually their life is the lost sheep. Actually, now they are wandering, and then they are having a full of conflicts, and then they are looking for the the shepherds right now. Now they are looking for the master of their own life. They do not know what the mystery of the birth. They do not know what the purpose of the marriage is, and they do not under, they do not have the understanding of the death. And they just live their life because other people they do so so they have the just loneliness and then you know emptiness and then they're just trying to fill up their emptiness and then some loneliness so they are looking for something right now and then now they are the lost sheep they do not know who is their master and who is their shepherd then what we have to do we have to find out the lost sheep actually that is the commissions that we must do it <laughs> And what is important? Number three, disciples, they already have experience of this one already. Number one and number two, they already have a lot of experience. Oh, okay, God is with me. And our mission is like this, heavily mandated and calling. They have a tons of the experience already. And number three, but they, number three, disciples that who still need the Jesus Christ. You know, if actually they have a lot of experience, they must to realize, right? But they still weak they still need the jesus christ okay today peter and john we can see that they are feel jealous of each other actually they don't want to feel jealous of someone 
but this is the nature of the Peter. Peter feel jealous of the John. This is the things that imprinted in Peter for a long time. Actually, this is like his spiritual problems that he couldn't notice. Do Do you know what is the spiritual problem? This is not from ours. This is not mine, but it become it becomes mine. Your suffering. You're suffering right now. Let's assume that you're suffering right now. Everyone has a different different part of the the part the things that you're suffering. Maybe other people know. Other people maybe notice already, or there's a, some part that. Other people couldn't notice, but only yourself that you know that your spiritual problem. Maybe you have the spiritual problem that you couldn't say other people, but actually that spiritual problem comes from where? What is the? Actually, it was not yours, but what is the evidence that it is not comes from yours? How we know because this spiritual problem doesn't comes from yourself, but comes from your ancestors and your family lines, and then actually. To tell you the correctly, actually, it comes from the our first man Adam and Eve when Satan comes to them, and since when they deceived by the Satan, the snake. Actually, because of the original sins, and this spiritual problem comes from the original sins of the first man Adam and Eve. The spiritual problems. Actually, it is not ours. But it becomes ours. Actually, it is not mine. So we cannot really control our spiritual problems, like beyond our controls. And this is not mine. So that's why we cannot control beyond our control. This is the evidence that this spiritual problem is not mine, and that we don't want it. So we receive those things from our parents. We don't want it. Oh, you! I don't want it. I don't want to have it. But I. It will gonna be passed on to our younger generation automatically. This is a great problem, actually. You know, even the spiritual problem that we are having right now. Sometimes we feel frustrated. We feel very mad at ourselves. But let's imagine. Let's assume that our problem will pass on to our younger generation, our childrens, and then you see that problem again through your childrens and younger generation again. That what you don't want to have, or the same thing that what you have. This is a spiritual problem. This is what you cannot really solve. Actually, you have to die. Then this problem can be solved. Actually, to tell you like strongly. But how can we are able to solve these problems? Actually, this spiritual problem we cannot solve it by ourselves. So, because why? Why this spiritual problem starts? Because we separate from God. Actually, the Satan deceive us to let us separate from God. Actually, this is the great scene that you know from the God's perspective. This is the great scene, and then when this scene gets solved. Actually, this is the only one way that we are able to get, you know, solve these problems. Nobody can solve these problems, but only Jesus Christ can solve this problem. This is the only one, only one, and a unique answers that can solve these problems. So Peter, he were fallen into this problem, these spiritual problems. But why? Why these kind of things was written in the Bibles? Because he wants to comfort us. Because we also same as the Peter sometimes. Not sometimes actually, like sometimes like we say say oh we follow the gods we follow the Jesus. But still we have the spiritual problems and we still have the old nature and sometimes we facing hardships and sometimes we feel suffering because of ourselves or we feel frustrated. So when you really understand your own spiritual problems correctly, actually sometimes you, you know, spiritual problems we always feel like oh this is my obstacles, and you always you know stumble because of your spiritual problem. But if you really understand, actually this is not an obstacles, but it could be a great platform that you're able to grow in spiritually, and you can be a witness. 
okay, if we don't have any spiritual problem, let's assume that. Can you really understand other people that who has the spiritual problems? We have the spiritual problems. Then we are able to when we have the spirit spiritual problem, we are able to understand other people that who have the spiritual problems. And then not only just understanding them, but you are able to save those kind of people that who has the spiritual problems. For some people, ah, spiritual problem is my obstacles. It could be the obstacles, but some for some people, you know, this spiritual problem can be a great platform for them. So spiritual problem. It's not a just one of the frustrations or one of the hardships or sufferings all the time, but it could be a great comfort. And then beyond this, it could be a great wish. I mean, it it could it could be a great hope, and it could be a great hope in the heavens. Okay, right now you satisfy with yourself. Right now in this world, can you really have the great hope? For the future, I mean, hope for the heavens, and it's still now we are still in the Christ, but sometimes we are suffering. So that's why, what is the great hope for us, like heavens? So while we're living in this world, so only like spiritual problems and spiritual truth. There is a spiritual problem and spiritual truth. So, only gospel that can solve these problems. Only, only Christ. We need only Christ. <coughs> we seems like oh, we have many tons of the problems in our life. But what is the great beginning of the problems? Like spiritual problems, right? So, what is the answer then? Answer to the spiritual problems, the Christ. The true priest who solve our sin. True priest, and the Satan who let us commit the sins. But true king who solve this problem, who solve the Satan problem. The true king and true priest, and we separate from God. And true prophets who open up the way that let us meet God. He's a true prophet. So Jesus Christ, who played the role as true priest and true king and true prophet, only Christ. He is the only gospel. There is no any other gospel. So only one gospel. So there is no any other solution in this world except gospel. Actually, there is no any other way that we are able to understand the introduction parts. Only through the gospel that we are able to understand. Heaven. How can you describe the heaven in one words? So where is the heaven then? You've never been there before, and how can you are able to explain about the heavens? You've never been there before. But when I'm preparing the message by self myself, like I was kind of realized that where is the heaven then? I keep asking. The place that they don't need only gospel that is the heaven. Actually, you agree with me, right? Yeah, the place that no necessary for. I mean, not necessary for the only gospel because heaven means like you don't need only gospel because there is no satans that who bring up the problems and there is no sin in the heavens and there is no need to you know meet God like. Because you already stay with God in there already, but in this world, we need only gospel in this world. In this world, so what is the great reason the why we need the only gospel? Because there is no any other thing. So what Satan is doing, <laughs> only gospel. Satan is feel afraid of the only gospel. He already know that. Only gospel is the only answer in this world. He already knew that, so he always disturbs this and he always attack us. So, what is the conclusions? So you have to refer to this. The deaf three years, blind three years.
and dump three years. Like, you know, 100 years ago, actually, the Korean mothers, actually, when they send their daughter to marry, this is what they keep asking. Like, the three things. When you go marry with your husband, when you're having uh, some problems, you have to be a deaf for three years. You have to live your life as a deaf, like three years. Like mom give uh, advice to their children that when you marry, you have to live your life as a, you know, you have to give a uh, three tips. Like the first tip is you have to live your life with your husband as a deaf. You have to just like, you have to choose what you want to hear. And then number two, you have to be a blind three years. You have to just sometimes you see everything, but sometimes you have to pretend that you do not see everything. And number three, you have to be a dumb for three years. Do not speak out many things. You know, like why Korean mothers, why they are keep like saying like this to their children? Why this is a tips? Like why why are they giving this kind of tips and advice to their children, to their daughters? Why? Why I'm talking about this? Like, what is the only faith? I mean, only gospel means like only faith. Actually, faith comes from the hearing. So you have to hearing, but hearing what? Hearing regarding about Jesus Christ. When you hear about the Jesus Christ, you start to have the faith. Why we do not have a faith? Because faith comes from the hearing, right? But you could, you didn't, do not really listen about the Jesus Christ. Why you couldn't really listen about Jesus Christ? You always listen to other things. You listen to many other things in this world. You always listen to other people's words and you listen to many things. But why you couldn't listen to the words of God? You couldn't listen. That's why there is nothing that you want to convey to other people. You never listen. So there is a nothing. There is no contents that you want to convey. I mean, you can convey. Okay, one day you met someone. You must give them a great solution. You must give them a words of God and to save their life. But do you really have the, those contents of the life? Do you have really have the contents that you can really save their life? If you think that now you don't have any contents or you don't have any words of God to convey to other people, pass on to other people, it means that you do not have life. Sorry to say that. You do not have life in yourself. Now, in you, you do not have the life in you. So why we have to be deaf like three years? Why? I'm not talking about you have to marry with someone right now. You have to listen only gospel. The gospel, it should be priority of your life. And the words of the gospel, it should be priority of your life. You have to be a deaf, like three years, like spiritually deaf. It means the only gospel you must listen. If you do not listen, how can you speak out? We can speak out when we hear something. The one way to be get survived, the one way to get revived, and the one way that we are able to save our future generation, what is that? In order to have the only face, you must to listen to the words of God, words of the Christ, you know, continuously, like regarding about Jesus Christ. Then number two, what is talking about like, you know, deaf three years, we should be, uh, sorry, like blind three years. What does it mean? Only fields. When God gave us the message, every message is related to our fields. You must see the world correctly. Do not only just look at the outer appearance of this world. Just you have to see something which is invisible to our eyes. We have to see something that what other people cannot see. We have to see those speech of truth. That when we really look at the world correctly. Then when you really see correctly, you can save yourself correctly first. And you can save other people's correctly. Let's really observe this world. Let's really observe closely this world. Everyone should be get healed. Everyone needs healing.
we must receive healing first. And we have to save other people and we must heal other people. If you really have the contents, if you really have the words of God to convey and pass on to other people, there is the blessings that God will give us. Through us, God will open the door of the evangelism. And evangelism, actually evangelism is everything of God. So we have to really, you know, open the door of the evangelism. But I mean, it doesn't mean that we open it. But God, we're going to open it and God, we're going to hide everything inside of here. You know, God will give us the contents. God, we're going to give us the words of God to pass on to other people. And God, we're going to open the door of the evangelism. <coughs> so we will understand what the healing is and we will save other people. Dump, like being a dump, like do not really speak out, like being a dump for three years. What does it mean? It means that if you really understand one and two, you are the only disciple. From the God's disciple, only disciple, actually, you are the most normal person in this world. And then you will be the summits. And then you will be reached to the summits. And then one day you will be a witness. Actually, for you, actually, there is not any other words that you need. Okay, you're really good at playing the soccer and you know many knowledge. But you're not talking about the soccer to a soccer specialist. But you just convey the words of God, which is the gospel to them. And the fields that God has revealed to us, God showed to us, if you see correctly, your fields, and then when you really convey this one to other people, and actually you are the only disciples. Actually, John is already finished with the chapter 20 already. Actually, John chapter 20, verses 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, And that by believing, you may have life in his name. John chapter 20 verses 31. It's, it is the conclusions already. Like they conclude already. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have the life in his name. And after that, John chapter 21, it's talking about the changes, like, I mean, changes in the life of the disciples. Actually, not only the disciples that are written in the Bible, they are not the only disciple of the Christ. But if you really, you know, agree with this, if you really join in here, we are able to have the life of the disciple of the Christ. So you and us, we must have this kind of the life. You must really understand this. Then you can really save yourself and you can really save your family and you can save the people that God has entrusted to us. So this is the only true life, right? Isn't it? If there is no any other reason to live. Actually, can you really have the joy or happiness? So I really wish you guys really meditate, do the deep holy meditation on that, and please receive a great answers. God gave us the three opp three opportunities, three chances. So God gave us the three chances in our lifetime. Like the first one, you have to be a spiritual fisher. You have to really become a spiritual fisher to save the people. And then number two, you have to become a spiritual shepherd, and you have to find out the lost sheep. And we are weak, and then sometimes we still have a lot of spiritual problems. But God allowed this spiritual problem to us because God wants to 
wants to interest in the greatest work for us. That's why God all of this one. So I really wish you guys to really hold on to these three commissions and then have the victory in your own fields and bless you in the name of the Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much. We have only once life. I mean, we have life only once in our life, but we are very thankful to your grace that we are, uh, you let us really hold on to the gospel and evangelism. And you gave us your great grace and you gave us the, your commissions, but it is not going to be ends with only our generations, but it was going to be passed on to other peoples that God has prepared. So because of the one believer, we truly believe that we can see the future of the like our place and then our nations and all of the surroundings. So you already saw, you already like revealed to us already. So please let us really hold on to, let us ev let us go out the fields with a great face. And Jesus Christ, I pray, amen.